What kind of movie can perfectly combine suspense and mystery? I believe the renowned Saw film series can provide an answer. Throughout the entire series, you gradually uncover the truth behind the events only as you progress through the escape games within. Today, let's continue with Saw 6. A woman suddenly wakes up from unconsciousness and discovers a strange mechanical device attached to her head. As Simone tries to get up, she unintentionally triggers a switch, and the lights in the room turn on, leaving her completely bewildered. Simone then notices two blades on a nearby table, while across the iron cage room, a man is also bound. This situation leaves Simone dumbfounded. Ow! Eddie, who is asleep, is awakened by screams. It turns out that Eddie is Simone's colleague. Simone quickly advises Eddie not to move recklessly. However, upon seeing the situation, the now awake Eddie panics and triggers the switch behind him as he gets up. At that moment, a television screen displays a masked kidnapper wearing a clown mask. I want to play a game. Hello. The kidnapper spoke a judgmental passage to them, and he was going to play a sick escape game with them. The balance device in the middle of the iron cage is their only way out. But only one person can survive and leave this place. The game's rule is that they must sacrifice their own flesh. Within 60 seconds, whoever can place more weight of their own flesh into the balance will win and survive, while the mechanical device on their heads will otherwise claim their lives. That's when they realized what the knives on the table were for. The knives on the table were chained up and could not be taken down to add weight to the scale. As the 60-second countdown begins, their mechanical devices activate, and the screws start drilling towards their heads. They realize that the kidnapper isn't joking, with no time to hesitate within the 60 seconds, driven by their will to survive. Eddie decisively chooses to cut off his own excess flesh to save himself. Simone tries to emulate Eddie, but she realizes she doesn't have any excess flesh and can only choose to sever one of her arms. Enduring excruciating pain, they use the blades to remove parts of their bodies. They successfully throw the severed parts into the balance within the given time, as the balance tips towards Simone's side. Eddie's device drills through his head, resulting in his death. The police quickly arrived at the scene to investigate after receiving the report. Erickson, in charge of the locked room case, found fingerprints on the victim that matched Detective Strom's. Erickson couldn't believe that Strom had become a member of Jigsaw, but Erickson didn't know that Strom had already been murdered by Detective Hoffman. Unaware of the truth, Erickson expressed his intention to surprise Hoffman. Little did he know that Detective Perez had arrived at the crime scene. This situation left Hoffman dumbfounded because he had received previous information that Detective Perez had died due to an accident. How could she be here? It turned out that Erickson and his team had suspected the involvement of a third party assisting Jigsaw, but they were unsure of the identity. To protect Detective Perez, Erickson had leaked false information. Perez's appearance made Hoffman uneasy. The police quickly made a new discovery during the victim's autopsy. Each victim had a distinctive marking wound, but the meticulous pathologist noticed that this time the marking was made with a different tool than the ones used on previous victims. Hoffman's explanation was met with skepticism by Perez, as they found identical wounds on another victim, inflicted with the same tool. This victim happened to be the boyfriend who had killed Hoffman's sister. As soon as they can technically analyze the sound from the process tape, they may be able to determine whether or not this was Strom's doing. Meanwhile, Jill, Jigsaw's ex-wife, found Hoffman. Jill tossed five envelopes to him, each containing a photo of the next victim for the upcoming game. And what the hell is going on here? It turned out that Jill had known about Jigsaw's punishment games all along. Originally, Jill wanted to stop Jigsaw from continuing these acts. But Jigsaw told Jill that he wasn't killing, he was trying to redeem those who didn't value life. As the owner of a rehabilitation clinic, Jill knew how challenging it was to reform people, but she disagreed with Jigsaw's methods of punishment. It wasn't until Jigsaw appeared before Jill with Amanda, who was once a drug addict but had completely overcome her addiction through Jigsaw's game, that Jill was convinced. These letters are also from Jigsaw's legacy to Jill. Detective Hoffman can only help Jill with Jigsaw's dying wish. At this point, William, the head of an insurance company, is still unaware that he's been targeted. As a flash of lightning struck, the lights suddenly went out. When William was about to go outside to check what was going on, there was a dark figure walking towards his office. William realized that the situation was not good. He immediately found a gun in the cupboard to defend himself. Before the intruder entered, William stealthily hid on the other side of the room. When the man in black came in to check the situation, William circled around behind the man in black and tried to control him. When the man in black turned around, William chose to shoot him. When William went up to check on the man in black, 
he realized that he was a security officer of the building. Before William could figure out what was going on, a man in a pig's head mask appeared behind him and knocked him out. When he regained consciousness, he found himself bound by chains, leaving William utterly bewildered. At that moment, a TV set started playing a video of Jigsaw. Oh, geez. Hello, William. Jigsaw revealed the reason why he had captured William. It turned out that as the head of an insurance company, William had devised a method that resulted in an 80% denial rate for insurance claims. He and his team would use public relations and media investigations to find loopholes and prevent clients from receiving compensation. Even when the policyholders' families were financially devastated and unable to bear the burden, they showed no empathy. Their focus was solely on policy terms and performance. Even Jigsaw who had cancer at the time, fell victim to their practices. Now, Jigsaw intended to punish William and subject him to a series of game tests. Mechanical devices attached to his limbs were equipped with explosives, and William would face four tests. If William failed to complete the tests, not only would he be in danger, but his family would also be killed. Jigsaw also gives him a demonstration of the power of the bomb, and William is horrified to see this. William had 60 minutes to complete the upcoming tests. In the first test, William would face another challenger, a janitor who didn't value his own life and was kidnapped for this purpose. Only one person would survive. The rules of the game were based on who could hold their breath the longest. With each breath taken, the mechanical device around their abdomen would tighten until one of them was crushed, unlocking the survivor's restraints. As the mechanical devices activated, the game began, and they immediately held their breath. Janitor was the first to take a breath because he couldn't hold it in, and the mechanism on his body immediately tightened. William managed to hold his breath for a few more seconds but eventually succumbed and took a breath, suffering the same consequence of his device tightening. Due to his youthful advantage, William was able to outlast the janitor in the subsequent rounds, holding his breath for a longer duration. Unable to endure any longer, the janitor was ultimately crushed to death. William successfully won the game and managed to free himself from the chains. He quickly noticed a key hanging on the staircase, just above the entrance to the next challenge. However, the key could only unlock one of the mechanical devices with bombs because William still had to complete three more tests. He heard cries for help coming from the next room, prompting William to hurry to the next challenge. There, he found two prompts with the words hold onto them written on them. On both sides were two mechanical lever devices. Initially, William intended to bypass this challenge, but as he moved away, the mechanical device attached to his body started to beep. In order to save his own life, William had no choice but to follow the rules of the game. He extended his hands and pulled the iron chain devices on both sides. Suddenly, a clown puppet appeared suspended behind a glass window in the adjacent room. A recording started playing. Introducing the rules of the game, the hanging Addie and Alan turned out to be William's subordinates. The recording provided detailed information about them and their family situations. According to the game rules, William now had to make a choice because only one of them could survive. The iron chains on both sides would gradually tighten as time passed, exerting immense force on William's hands. If William couldn't withstand the force and chose to release either side, the platform beneath the abandoned person would also drop. The selected person would be hanged directly. Now William realized how difficult it was to decide someone's life or death based on rules. As the tension increased from the tightening chains, William had no choice but to make a decision, or else he would also be in danger. At this moment, William didn't make the choice based on the value of life. He leaned towards rationality and chose to save the older Addie because she had a family and children. Alan was abandoned by William. <laughs> As the platform beneath him dropped, Alan plummeted towards the glass window. Witnessing this scene, William was left dumbfounded. Addie temporarily survived, but her fate was uncertain. She had to rely on her own luck to escape, because William still had to complete the remaining challenges within the given time. He proceeded to the next stage after obtaining the key and successfully unlocking the second bomb mechanical device on his hand. William arrived at the next level only to discover that it was a boiler room filled with scorching hot steam. The recording device provided a new game prompt. The woman locked below was none other than William's legal advisor, Debbie, who had been bound and brought here for helping William with his previous actions. Next Debbie will have 90 seconds to escape the cage and get out of here, or the mechanism in her body will kill her outright. Only William could help Debbie escape the cage. As the game began, the shackles on Debbie's hands were released. However, as Debbie attempted to escape, she realized that the passage was filled with scorching hot steam, making it impossible to pass through directly. It was then that William noticed a clue nearby. If he presses the valve of the device, 
The hot air below will be blocked, but the price is that William will have to bear the damage of the heat. After a few tussles William managed to help Debbie escape by enduring the pain from the heat, but the final clue left Debbie dumbfounded because the key to open the deadly mechanical device on her was sewn into William's stomach, but William on the outside has no idea what's going on. Debbie, wielding the chainsaw, attacked William, who pleaded for mercy repeatedly as he faced Debbie's assault. Unbeknownst to Debbie, the countdown had already ended, and as the mechanical device on her was triggered, she died on the spot. William, on the other hand, obtained the key to unlock the bomb mechanical device and continued to the next level. Upon arriving, William was shocked by the situation before him. The six people tied to the swivel chair were the team responsible for digging up the loopholes in the insurance policy, and none of them were spared from being tied up here to be punished. Once again, it was a game of choosing based on human nature, because only two of the six of them can survive. And the one who can decide who survives is still William who is being tested. Once the chairs stopped, the gun apparatus in front of them would fire directly. William had two chances to press the machine buttons and choose to save two of them. However, pressing the buttons would also cause William's hands to endure the pain from the mechanical device. As the game began, the people bound above begged desperately, with everyone praying for William to save them, but faced with the pain he would endure and the dilemma of choosing who would survive. William hesitated. The first man to face the gun becomes cannon fodder and is sent away. When the chairs stopped for the second time, a woman quickly claimed that she had children to take care of, and William decisively chose to press the button. And so, William's hands endured the pain from the mechanical device, but he successfully saved the woman. As the next round of the game began, at this time, all the people in order to survive began to make up all sorts of reasons, and even they fell out with each other on the spot to expose each other. Amidst the arguments and accusations, round after round, William had become numb, he could only do his best to choose and save two people, while the others perished. William began to regret the actions he had once taken because each decision he made was, in essence, determining the fate of another person. Meanwhile, Hoffman, the overseer in charge, witnessed the entire process firsthand. Hoffman's phone rang and he got a call from Erickson because the technician had made a breakthrough on the recording. Hoffman, who had arrived, felt a sense of unease. The technician told them that although the recording had been professionally processed, she was able to use the inversion step to quickly resolve the original sound of the tape. At this point, Perez and Erickson were unaware that Hoffman was preparing for the worst. With the original sound of the recording came Hoffman's voice. Before they could react, Hoffman swiftly pulled out a knife and slit Erickson's throat. In a swift move, Hoffman splashed hot coffee on Perez and quickly sabotaged the power device in the vicinity. Caught off guard, Perez attempted to retaliate by reaching for his gun, but to his surprise, Hoffman grabbed the technician, the technician becomes Hoffman's shield, and Perez accidentally kills him. Hoffman quickly rushed in front of Perez, and he stuck a knife into Perez's body, who died instantly after being stabbed several times. Hoffman took care of them in an instant. It turns out that the previous victims were actually engineered by Hoffman using the severed hand left behind by Strom. Now, he intended to dispose of the evidence in the same manner. Hoffman left Strom's fingerprints at the scene and doused it with gasoline along with the videotape, setting everything ablaze. On the other side, William successfully reached the final stage before the countdown ended. As he arrived, the iron doors on both sides opened, revealing a mother and child along with a woman. The woman was William's sister, Pamela. However, William's mission was not to save the mother and child. And Tara notices that the man in front of her is William, the man responsible for denying them insurance. Tara's husband had passed away due to the inability to afford medical treatment without insurance compensation. As Jigsaw's tape played once again, William finally understood that Tara and her child were the main characters in this game. Jigsaw now gave Tara and her child the opportunity for revenge. They could choose to forgive William or choose to execute punishment, as the adjacent switch device contained tools to punish William. Faced with William's desperate pleas, the kind-hearted Tara refrained from taking action, but seeing his father's killer in front of him, Brent chose to activate the button, with the nail-covered instruments and tools overhead coming down on William. At this moment, William was immobilized and couldn't move at all. Even more frightening was the fact that the tube at the back of the mechanical tool already had sulfuric acid flowing down it, and William could only watch as his lower body was slowly corroded until it was separated. On the other side, after dealing with the situation, Hoffman returned to the control room. However, he didn't expect to find the threatening letter he had written to Amanda right there. From this, 
We finally learn what Hoffman's letter to Amanda mentioned. It turned out that Amanda was involved in Jill's accident years ago. Amanda was the one who begged the man who caused Jill's miscarriage to steal the medicine, and Hoffman wrote the threatening letter so that Jigsaw wouldn't catch him in the act. So he told Amanda to kill Lynn and get Jigsaw killed. Before Hoffman could figure out what was going on, Jill took the remote control and activated the electric shock under the chair. Hoffman quickly became electrocuted and passed out. Jill then put the same mechanical device on Hoffman's head, the same one given to Amanda. This headgear mechanism was one of Jigsaw's legacies to his wife. Among Jigsaw's possessions, there was a sixth letter unknown to Hoffman, containing photos of himself. Jigsaw has foreseen that if he dies, his wife may be killed by Hoffman, since Jill also knows Hoffman's handle. How Jill obtained this threatening letter remains unknown. In order to survive, Hoffman used the mechanical device on his head to break his own hand. He successfully freed himself from the ropes binding his hands to prevent the headgear mechanism from tearing him apart. Hoffman managed to wedge it open by forcefully bracing against the iron bars of the window. He forcibly broke free from the mechanical headgear and narrowly survived. 